because like I think you said before the Big Bang, you don't know. No, I have no idea, but the I I think that most people are proposing a problem that isn't a real problem. Like, how did the universe get created? There's we've never seen anything ever be created. So maybe the universe yeah. isn't created. Maybe that's just the wrong starting question. Well, well, that's the whole thing. It's either there's only two. It can only be two things. Like from a logical point of view, it can either be only infinite regression, which you say is not. You don't believe in that, or that the universe is infinite regression, which I would, I would say. Well, obviously, God um, is infinite regression. He just existed, but the universe, from a materialistic point of view, the the universe can't be infinite regression, and therefore it would require a starting point. So it's either it's a starting point or it's infinite regression. Or it's There's cyclical. No other logical explanation. Or it's cyclical, which means it doesn't have a it doesn't have a beginning point. Uh, well, I guess that cyclical. would be the point. Yeah, like the equator. The equator doesn't begin anywhere. But you can travel from point A to point B on the equator. Um, so if we treat the equator like a timeline, it has no beginning. That's not exactly the same thing as being like eternal or anything like that. There are an infinite series of steps. You can divide it up into smaller and smaller pieces infinitely. Um, but that's, st yeah. but again, I mean, that's not, that doesn't mean that it begins at a certain point. There are some people that say infinite regression is not a problem because you can still go from point A to point B on it. I don't, I don't, take that position and try to argue from it because I think it's a little bit too clunky or maybe I'm just not smart mm. enough but okay um, <clears throat> and what do you think about the fine tuning argument I think it's a terrible argument like it, it sounds great um, give me one moment here what the hell okay. why would you say um, it's a terrible argument. Sorry. Um, I think it's a no terrible worries. argument because um, there are lots of there are lots of different ways to approach it. But when you say everything is fine tuned, there's the and again, I, I'm too dumb. I don't write. The, I should write this stuff down so I can remember it better and articulate it better. But there's the case that the fine tuning fallacy is or it, it's fallacious in the same sense that whenever I look at puddles, I notice that the pothole in the road is perfectly shaped for that puddle. And it's like, no, it, the puddle it just consequently takes up the shape of its container and that there's nothing special there. And our universe being finely tuned or whatever is maybe just a an inevitability and it requires no supernatural explanation, for example. Another possible rebuttal for it is that maybe the multiverse is a thing, or uh, yeah, maybe the multiverse is true. So there are an infinite number of universes where the conditions are different because they say like if, if just one parameter, one of these finely tuned constants was slightly different, then matter couldn't have formed or inflation would have stopped and gravity would have collapsed the universe back into a singularity and nothing would have happened, so on and so forth. Well, but that's assuming mm. one of them changes and none of the others do. Perhaps there's an infinite number of perturbations, or uh, not perturbations, but permutations of those constants. Actually, I think both of those words would work, I think. Anyways, now I find that to be kind of a cop-out answer, um, but it's th there's nothing wrong with the answer. It's just I don't typically give it because it lets the person on the other side be like, so you're just invoking an infinite number of realities to make it sounds real convenient doesn't yeah. it it's like well i'm sorry that the laws of physics have have taught us that there's no problem with this but anyways i think the yeah. best i think the best mm -hmm. explanation is the 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 finely tuned constants are people say that as if those and this is something that this dumbass kid named theus brooks always does he says that specifically tuned um, for life, but that's not at all the case because life doesn't operate according to different laws of physics. 
the universe if the universe is finely tuned then those parameters which govern literally everything in the universe then the universe is finely tuned for everything the universe is finely tuned for black holes the universe is finely tuned for the planet pluto the universe is finely tuned for anything what you're doing is you're saying humans are special they're anthropomorphizing the cause behind the universe and saying that God must be like humans, that that God would want to have a relationship and talk to humans, and saying, therefore, the best explanation is the finely tuned constants allow this God to communicate with us. But you're you're reading into the intentions of God the most mysterious imaginable thing, and the hubris of that is just so, it's so unpalatable. And it's really ironic coming from people that say, like, we're trying to, like, I don't know, undermine or make make existence seem less special or whatever. And it's like, but you think the fucking creator of the universe cares whether or not you chop the tip of your dick off and what you do with that, with that wiener in private uh, and that you're going to get your own special place in eternity after you die and we're conceited? No. <laughs> so... <laughs> um <clears throat> on that so <clears throat> do you where would you how would you how would you ground your morality what do you use to ground your morality um i think we should use reason and to an extent um i don't know what to call this i typically call it like biological realism so like humans are you can just go online and read the secular humanist manifesto it does it does a really proper job of laying it out so you would say that you believe in realism you're not like an anti-realist um i don't think i am but i don't know whenever i hear people whenever i hear somebody talk about like well i'm a nominalist and i google nominalism i'm like yeah that sounds kind of like what i think is really going on but then i'll so then, then somebody will be like, "Well, yeah, but I'm a materialist," and I'll read it, and I'll be like, "Well, I mean, yeah, I think there's a material reality that actually exists." Um, sorry, what sounds did you say? like sorry. would you say? Would you not say you relativism? The idea that truth and morality are like not absolute, but depend on like individuals' perspectives, for example. So I think that that is true in some cases. What I some. The one thing that I typically don't walk away from in terms of like philosophical worldviews is mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you would call this, but um, like a materialist or an atomist. I think that, do I think chairs exist only in the minds of conscious creatures? I think that they do. Um, so if a chair doesn't really objectively yeah. exist, then what does? Well, the particles it's made of, like I would say the standard model are the only real things that do exist and they really do exist. And then you could also say like, perhaps like the underlying wave function, th that's, that's really real. Space time is really real, even if it isn't really like made of things. We mm. could say the fields are real, but, uh, and, mm. and then everything else is just a, a social convention, right? That's, that's something I typically don't walk away from, but I don't, I don't really care about that kind of stuff because I don't, I don't think it lets you do anything other than win arguments. So I, okay. yeah, I just, I just don't care all that much. I don't really know what else to say about it. Yeah. Uh, no, cool. Thanks for explaining. It's just fun. It's just interesting for me because I uh, just, um, I've looked into some of these lots of different, for example, agnostic atheism and things you would say, I guess you're an ag agnostic atheist. That's what I call myself, oh. yeah. <clears throat> and I'm just looking, yeah, for example, you're saying they live, evolution is true, uh, but you would say you wouldn't be able to say that from objective because you don't, do you believe in any, any things or objective um so human beings not... can objectively experience pain and suffering and if pain and suffering are simply defined declared by fiat because that's how language and grammar works to be wrong then any action that uh, undermines the survivability and causes an individual to suffer is objectively wrong now i think that that's kind of a 
nominal or sorry nominal case um some people take a perspective on morality called like or sorry normative i think is what it is where things yeah. things can only be ob objectively true in the sense that they conform with some sort of like goal or realization or whatever i think that's called I already forgot what I said. Nominalism or something like, or normative mm. ethics. A, I think I think that's what it's like the one, something to do with like emotion. I so forget the name now, but it's basically like um, you add a, you give an emotion towards like a like say for example like unaliving someone. You would you wouldn't or maybe that's a bad example, but for example like extreme case with in terms of grape or something. You wouldn't, you can't objectively say that is right or wrong, but you can, like from what I've heard, some people say, well, they just have like a boo or like a sad feeling when someone does that, like in a way, because they can't objectively say that it's right or wrong. Well, I think, so I think you can say it objectively in the sense that we know that there is an actual objective experience that a living thing will have and that living things pretty much unilaterally like the suffering is not part of the um, experience that living things have that they deem as being good. But I mean, these terms, if these terms just like literally mean what they mean, because it's declared that way, like if it's true by definition, um, if, if we can, yeah. if we can say that good and bad suffering and whatever are just bad by definition, then it's objjectively true that causing those things is, so you is would, not warranted and is not good. You would then have to say that suffering um, can never be uh, like a positive outcome. For example, like resilience or innovation or altruism. Uh, you would say that that's not like you wouldn't think that suffering could ever be like a positive outcome. Well, I mean, there's like nobody's ever come up with an epistemology that is devoid of any contradictions. So, like, for example, um, if my appendix was burst, then I would or well, not even that. Let's say I have like some sort of condition that's not even causing me to suffer and I get an operation for it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to cause me quite a lot of pain and suffering, but it it is for the interest of staving off future certain death or very much worse suffering. So it's not, it, it's not um, bad in the same sense that just a, a pointless. And again, this yeah. is, I think I said yeah. this earlier where you, you have to incorporate reason and rational minds into this. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no rational argument you can give that says it's okay for me to do harm to you, but it's not okay for you to do harm to me because I'm me and you're you. There is no, there's no logic to that whatsoever. There's perfect logic in, you know, like exercising isn't fun. It makes your muscles sore, but it makes you healthier in the future. So you will have a better life. There is logic there. So again. So you would say that in some cases, for example, it will be good to be selfish in other cases it might not be good to be selfish would you agree with that um there's a, there is such a thing as what do they call it like um what the hell is it called it's called something like selfish altruism i don't remember exactly Altru what it uh, is selfish altruism. Uh -huh. yeah but like for example a parent that sacrifices their life to save their child that that yeah. may seem like that can't have a biological explanation, but from an evolutionary perspective, if you've passed on your genes and you sacrifice yourself to save your child, you are winning the game of life and evolution, like exactly mm -hmm. as it is, <laughs> exactly in the way you should. Um, well, not should, but it. the benefit there is obviously positive, so... And funny enough, yeah. funny enough, the logic of that tracks exactly with the uh, exactly along the grounds of evolution. Because I doubt you would sacrifice yourself for me. Like literally, you know you're going to die. Like if you saw me in a river, you'd jump in and save mm. me. I'd probably do the same thing for you. But like you literally know you're going yeah. to die. You wouldn't do that for me. You probably wouldn't do it for your cousin either. But for five of your cousins, I bet maybe you would. But you'd do yeah, it without like even thinking like, for only one of your children. Mm -hmm.
right? I think what you also think about is, uh, you know, about the the tests with the train, for example, where it's like if you're in control of the train and you can either choose like deliberately right. change the train track to unalive five people or just go on its way and it will unalive one person. It's like, do you decide, you would say, would you decide to move the tra- move the train track or you just let nature be its way and... Okay, this is really yeah. funny. Yeah. So when this when I took college philosophy and I heard the trolley problem for the first time, my yeah. answer oh, was yeah. actually very different. And I I don't usually hear nuts. I don't I usually don't hear anybody give this answer, but I said, look, I'm not responsible for what has happened mm-hmm. here. So if I pull that lever, mm-hmm. I killed one person. If yeah. I don't pull the lever, yeah. I didn't do anything. Yeah. And I to yeah. me, I for just the way I think, and maybe I think in a messed up way, that's kind of almost the best answer. Now, what people think in the abstract versus how they act in the real world is also mm. very often different. So yeah. who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw like someone like a YouTube video and like where guys actually did a test with the trolley problem. They simulated the whole trolley problem just and yeah, v- all fake. Vsauce did that. See how Vsauce, yeah, yeah Vsauce. I haven't watched Vsauce in a long time. He's really good, actually. There's some really interesting things. Yeah, I wish he would um, come back. He's not... Oh yeah, he hasn't done He barely anymore. does anything yeah, at all anymore. For a while, yeah. but not anymore. I haven't seen... I was like, yeah, I should actually go check his latest stuff out, but you're saying he doesn't really make them. The original ones was really good. Yeah.